In a restaurant kitchen, there's always one tool that a chef always has on hand. And whether you're a seasoned home cook or you can barely boil water, today I'm gonna to share what that tool is and why you need it in your kitchen arsenal. So what is the most important tool in a kitchen? Well, it's not this, it's not this, and it's not even this. The most important tool in a kitchen is actually one of these, a thermometer. Here's why. Now while a pan, a knife, and a stove are vital in their own right for cooking, a thermometer is essential for something perhaps even more important, food safety. And trust me, food safety is really important. In fact, in culinary school, before you even set foot in a kitchen, you have to take a whole semester on safe serving of food, safe making of food, and safe handling of food. And a lot of times that comes down to cooking foods, specifically meats, poultry, and seafood to a safe temperature. And you really only know when temperature is safe by using one of these, a thermometer. That's why if you ever see a chef walking around in his or her uniform, they always have a little thermometer, usually one stuck right in their pocket. You see, when meat isn't cooked to the proper temperature, bad things can happen. And if you've ever had food poisoning, it could be because your meat, your poultry, or your seafood was not cooked to the proper temperature. Now the government has a whole list of proper temperatures and I'll link to that in the description below. But you probably know some of these. For chicken, it's 165 degrees. And again, if you're a novice cook and you're just kind of learning your way around the kitchen, having one of these on hand is absolutely essential to make sure that the food you are serving yourself, your family, and your friends is safe to eat. So let's take our chicken example for another recipe. Yeah, you know, you've probably read in some recipes that if you just cut into a chicken and you see the juices run clear that it's safe to eat. And yeah, that really is a good guideline but truly you never really know unless you take the temperature of the meat. Now at this point you might be wondering, why do you even have to cook chicken to 165 degrees and pork to 145 degrees? Who makes up these numbers? Well, in America, that's the USDA. And those numbers are the temperatures at which the bacteria and organisms and nasty little things that are unfortunately inherent in meat are killed. So that means once the meat, the poultry, the seafood has reached that temperature, it has killed the organisms that otherwise might harm you. So beyond just the safety of meat and making sure that it's cooked to the proper temperature, a thermometer is also vital for another reason, and that is cooking meat to the temperature that you desire. So for example, if you like your steak medium rare, but your friend likes her steak well done, you're really only gonna know it's reached that deadness point by using a thermometer. So for medium rare, you're gonna to wanna to go on the lower end, 145 degrees, whereas for something that's well done, you wanna go on the higher end, 160 to 165 degrees. Now again, these gaps aren't really big, and that's why it's vital to have one of these guys to insert into the meat to see where your progress is. So just a few tips when it comes to a thermometer. If you have not bought one, or if you're looking at buying another, they come in two main forms. There's ones like this that are digital, and there's others that are analog, and they just use a gauge. Now, the analog ones are nice because you never need a battery, but I tend to not recommend those because they take a little time to respond, even those ones that say instant read. I actually prefer a digital thermometer like this, and although they cost a little bit more and they do require batteries, they check temperature a lot faster. And trust me, when you're cooking a steak and you're rapidly going from medium to medium well, you want that speed. You, you want to know what that temperature is as quickly as possible. And also, just like any digital gauge, these are gonna be really accurate. They're gonna display the exact temperature. Some digital models like this are even more advanced and they have Bluetooth. That means they can pair with your phone and alert you to let you know that the temperature has been reached to whatever you're cooking. I use this when I'm making yogurt and I wanna make sure that the milk has come to the proper temperature. Thermometers are not that expensive. They range in price from about $10 to 20 or 30, depending on the features. 
and that is really a small, small price to pay when it comes to food safety and when it comes to being a better cook and making quality food that turns out the way you want it. Now, one more quick uh, tip before we wrap up here, and this is something that a lot of people forget to do. After taking the temperature of meat, make sure you thoroughly wash the probe. It doesn't matter what kind of thermometer you're using, whether it's just the simple stick kind or something like this where the probe is attached. You want to make sure that you wash this really well. And the reason you want to clean that probe really well is because if you stick it in meat that has not been cooked to the proper temperature yet, that means those organisms can, you got it, stay attached to this probe. And next time you stick it in the meat, you're, put, you're putting those right back in there. And that's called cross-contamination. But that's another episode. So guys, I hope you found this helpful. Do you have a thermometer? Are you in the market for one? Let me know in your comments below what works for you and maybe what doesn't work for you. As always, thank you for watching. If you have a question on something in the kitchen or you have a request for a recipe you'd like to learn how to make, put that in the comments below too, and maybe I'll get to it on a future episode. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.